Hello and welcome back to Inquisitor Martyr. Last time we found the cult that was piloting the astute cavalier and captured them by using a sniper rifle to their chest, or at least the leader, because this fired a magically non-lethal round. And now we have to talk to Metrodora Thelema about what information we were able to extract from that leader. The interrogation was successful, Inquisitor. The subject embraced the biochemical gifts of the Omnisire wholeheartedly. You can find my report on your data slate. Give me an outline. The Chaos Cult that acquired the Cavalier was following the commands of a Chaos Sorcerer. I won't utter its name. It burns my tongue like bile. So, they were spreading the taint on the orders of the Word Bearers. That Sorcerer recently ordered the Cavalier to return to their headquarters. I have the location for you. Alright. The confession of a captured cultist eventually led me to the hideout of the astute cavalier. The cultists and their word-bearer masters will pay for the atrocities against the Imperi Imperium. My main objective is still the logbook of the Van Winter family. It is the only lead I have on what happened to Uther Tiberius. I'm on the cavalier. It doesn't look good, Captain. The cultists clearly didn't believe in regular maintenance projects. First, I will take care of the word bearer spot, then I will find the leg. <sighs> so, I was thinking, you know, what do I want to talk about during this episode? And while I was sitting there waiting for the map to load. I figured one thing I haven't really covered is to degree the armories of both the Imperial Guard and of Space Marines. The first thing to go over is arguably the most important, which is the Bolter. Since that's... It's the main weapon of the Space Marines, though a bolt pistol is sometimes used by Imperial Commissars, the bolter as a rifle is pretty much not used by Imperial Guard. It's... I'm trying to think of a way to fully express it. It's a 50 caliber, effectively, assault rifle, except... It fires gyrojet rounds, which, if you know what a gyrojet is, they're actually a ammo type that was attempted back in the 50s and 60s, where instead of having a bullet casing with your propellant in it and then launching, having the explosion launch the actual bullet, a gyrojet round is a larger bullet with a couple of vents drilled in the back with the propellant inside so that when the weapon fires it ignites that and it launches it. It's essentially a micro rocket. The weird part about how they're depicted in 40k is they're also shown in many cases having a bullet casing which I guess could be a thing of having it fire the round initially from a ex semi-external propellant, so within the casing, and then as the round flies, some of the initial explosion triggers some, some sort of fuse that eventually hits and then ignites and propels the round further. But that's not really explained within lore, so... I just kind of assume that that's just a mistake in a lot of depictions. Otherwise, yeah, it, it just raises more questions than answers, and 
it doesn't help anything. But it's only used really by Space Marines and the few instances by the Commissariat because the rounds, obviously they're 50 cals, they're huge. If they hit an average guardsman or traitor guardsman, essentially any human, it's just going to punch a hole clean through them. The rounds are massive, the force behind them is insane, and that's not even including variants like a stalker bolter, which functions as a... Uh, like a marksman rifle. They're not full sniper rifles because full sniper rifles exist and are used by both Space Marines and by the Imperial Guard. So they're, they kind of fall into a weird position. Another weapon commonly used by, not really common, but relatively commonly used by Space Marines is plasma weaponry. Actually, let's let's backtrack to bolters quick, because there's still a few versions. There's also storm bolters, which are almost like a light machine gun kind of bolter. Bigger magazine, some of them are double-barreled. They don't fit in as like a full like heavy machine gun, quite like a heavy bolter does, because a heavy bolter is used by your typical setup teams for the Space Marines. They're used by Devastator squads and Devastator Marines, while a Storm Bolter can be handled. They're shown to be handled single-handedly, or with a single hand, by Terminators. But of course, Terminators have heavier armor, and it, in theory, should allow them to wield heavier weapons with greater ease. But yeah, so that covers bolters, because then there's the bolt pistol, which it's a bolter, but a pistol. Like I said, used by commissars, not really by any other standard Imperial Guardsmen. The plasma weapons, as I was getting to, their plasma pistols are used by... Well, plasma weapons in general are used by the Imperial Guard. Since they... A lot, compared to their standard loadout of a LAS gun or a auto gun or stubber, it actually has a chance of reliably or semi-reliably punching through Space Marines and pretty much any infantryman. And plasma... You have plasma guns, which are rifles, plasma pistols, which are obviously pistols. You have plasma cannons, which, much like a heavy bolter, can be used by a Devastator squad or a Devastator marine. They also can be used on vehicles. There are, like, there's, there's the Executioner plasma cannon, which is used on Lehman Rust tanks. There's... I think it's the Shadow Sword is the Baneblade variant that uses Plasma. I don't remember exactly because there's... Baneblades alone have so many variants that I forget them half the time. But rest assured there is one that uses Plasma. Plasma does have the risk of overheating, which, in terms of tabletop, if you roll a 1, it'll kill the unit. But that's only when you overcharge. So you kind of have to gamble, do you want to deal extra damage, but run the risk of dying or losing a unit. Which, when you're playing, like, Imperial Guard, you can typically afford to toss a guardsman. If they land a hit, you know, they've essentially already paid for themselves. Then, let's see. No, we'll go into it. Auto guns are essentially standard, you know, machine guns. 
Auto pistols are standard machine pistols. Stubbers are heavy machine guns. You don't really see any form of standard, you know, auto gun, auto pistol, any what would be a modern style firearm used by Space Marines. They'll always use far bigger weapons. Their strength and bulk allow them to. While they're cheap and easy to provide for your standard Imperial Guard, granted, Imperial Guardsmen can also use the LAS gun. And the LAS gun. There's always the joke that LAS guns are effectively glorified flashlights, because they kind of are. The thing is, they're also stupidly easy to take care of. A LAS rifle will have, you know, its battery pack for ammunition, but the kicker is these things can be maintained pretty much any way you can see fit. There is moments in the lore that explain that to charge them, charge the battery packs, you can even throw them into a fire and they will draw in the heat and generate a charge. So they're stupidly easy to maintain and use, and I think that kind of explains why they're so flimsy in terms of damage. They'll still they'll still kill a person. Like, there's no second-guessing that part. The Imperium of Man may not give a, much of a damn about your average person, but they're not going to just throw someone a weapon that doesn't work. Now, bolters, plasma guns, las guns, pretty much any weapon also has a variety of variants. There's different patterns, much like how when you look at like a modern assault rifle, you have the AR slash M4 pattern of assault rifle. You have an AK pattern. You can have... I'm trying to think what other main pattern assault rifles there are, because those are the two big ones off the top of my head. But in 40k, different planets have different ones. Like, there's Mars pattern, there's... Like Aquila pattern weapons, and even Chaos has their own versions because they have hair attacks and their own forges producing weapons. What it means in general is very little. There are some in lore bits that are like, oh, some versions are higher quality. But there isn't any, like, super terrible cobbled-together versions. Flamers, that's another weapon commonly used by both Imperial Guard and Space Marines. Which, just to explain a flamer, even though it should be pretty obvious by the name, it's a flamethrower. They use... Promethium as a fuel source instead of what standard flamethrowers now use, which I believe is still jelly petrol. But your your average flamer, those things can be given to guardsmen, space marines, there's heavy flamers which shoot further and hotter. They can be put on vehicles, which they can be mounted on the sides, like on tanks. They can be mounted as the main gun, like a Hellhound, which is a Chimera vehicle pattern variant. Which is also the other variant of the Chimera, which would be the Bane Wolf, which is effectively the same version, or the same t idea, having a large flamethrower, but it shoots flesh-melting chemicals. I'm surprised... I mean, I'm not surprised in terms of both lore and Games Workshop, but I also am kind of surprised that they 
never tried making any form of chimeras or Imperial Guard vehicles that have had at least a degree of Adeptus Mechanicus tinkering. Like, the Admech have, like, the Radium Carbine, which is a rifle that fires irradiated bullets. That seems like something I could see some guardsmen being equipped with, especially considering there's a lot of different types of guardsmen. You have, you know, penal colony troops or guys from prison, while giving them fancy advanced, or at least fancy very lethal technology and weapons might not be the best option or idea, it's also, if it has any chance of backfiring and horribly irradiating the user, it's a great way to kind of test weapons out. That said, there's also melta guns, which are, I would almost describe them, it's not really accurate to, per se, but I'd say, think of a hyper flamethrower, and that's kind of what a melta is. Melta guns being rifles that are extremely power, not really rifles, they're almost a flamer, except instead of shooting flame, it's almost like a superheated gas, almost like a plasma. And then Melta, there are Melta bombs, which are almost like a demolition charge or grenade. Then you have the Melta guns, which can fire... I don't like calling it Melta itself, because it feels inaccurate, but it fires what a Melta gun fires. It's superheated fuel or whatever it may be at a target and can melt through armor and... In general, it's really good. At least against vehicles and armored units. People... I mean, the argument of, is it good against, like, guardsmen? Well, anything's good against a guardsman. If you're strong enough, your bare fist can work against guardsmen. But in general, it's... A very interesting weapon. There's also multi meltas. Those are seen. You can find those on dreadnoughts. Some vehicles. They can also be used as an infantry weapon. Granted, it's once again falls under more of a setup team to utilize them. But multi meltas are fairly common. Well, not really com. Well, yes, common in the sense that they are used not common in the sense of, like, you're not gonna find every other heavy weapon squadron using melta weapons. Shotguns are used by anyone and everyone. They don't really change, they're just shotguns. Like I said, sniper rifles, scout marines use them, as opposed to a good chance your average marine will, or average guardsman will have them. You have frag grenades, crack grenades, which are stronger frags from all I am able to discern. A lot of the weapons, like what the assassin here uses, these are very specialized weapons, you know, Exodus rifles are used, but they're used by assassins. They're not just distributed to your standard infantryman. The Needler rifle, that's that's assassin exclusive. No one else gets their hands on those. A lot of their blade weapons are very set to them. Some blade weapons are... Within the Imperial Guard, blade weapons aren't very common. Some groups will have, you know, a sword or something as a close-range weapon, but they're not... They're less standard issue and more dependent on the actual unit themselves, if they want to use them. 
while Imper er, well, Space Marines will get their hands on a far greater variety. You'll see them use power swords, power axes, which are both standard bladed weapons, but having essentially a sheath of energy about them to cut through things easier. You have chain swords. I don't know if they really use chain axes. It's another instance where I don't get why I just see chaos with them. Because well, they use a sword or an axe, it's kind of irrelevant. It shouldn't be this is exclusively for these guys because they're bad. Terminators get things like power claws, which are just like power swords, but claws. They get uh, chain fists, which are essentially a small chain sword at the wrist to use against enemies. There's power fists. These can be found with Imperial Guard, Commissars, okay. they can be used by Space Marines, even Terminators. They're pretty common in terms of, like, who gets access to them. And a power fist is... It's a gauntlet that hits hard. There's not a lot of pomp and circumstance about it. It's just for punching hard. Does very well what it does. It just isn't. The name isn't very special, and what it does isn't very special either. What else is there? Some weapons have shown up in, like, in the game Space Marine. They had the Vengeance Launcher. I don't even know if that's an actual thing within lore, because I've never seen it pop up anywhere else. It was pretty much just a sticky grenade launcher. It was cool, but I don't really know if it... I don't count it as canon, just because it's never shown up elsewhere. You can make the argument of it could be an experimental weapon by the Adeptus Mechanicus on that planet. Or it could be an STC weapon, which is a standard template something. Essentially, pretty much Archaeotech. Ancient technology that they found a blueprint for. Entire planets have been brought to war over STCs. Where's the standard template construct? I don't remember. Regardless, they're old blueprints that, in most cases, no one knows how to make it otherwise. Kind of like, uh... What is it? Phosphex, I think? Is a flaming poison that was used in the Horus Heresy. So that's 30k instead of 40k. To my understanding, pretty much no one knows how to use it anymore or make it. So the instances that exist of it are rare and quite prized. Much like there are there are entire tanks that no one knows how to make anymore. Either from the Horus Heresy or even prior to that, the Dark Age of Technology. A lot of stuff was lost. And the thing is, the templates can be anything from guns on armor to something as simple as like an auto scribe. Some simple object that just writes down what you dictate or what you say. It can be very basic, and places, worlds will go to war over them, and you'll have groups of tech marines do dubious things to get them. Because, honestly, tech priests 
If you had a Game Boy, there's a chance they would mug you for it. What a surprise! Did you come to witness our victory, Inquisitor? I came to serve you the Emperor's justice. Just like I did with your foul brothers. Hot-headed creature! You cannot stop what is coming, even if you kill every one of us, which you won't. That's a lot of guys. Yeah, like, Adeptus Mechanicus, if they think you have technology that could be useful, they'll they'll take it from you. Or if they think your world has something, even if you don't want them there, they will still push their way onto your planet and dig up stuff. Granted, their own inquisitive nature has gotten them into trouble. The most obvious examples would be pretty much anything with the Necrons. They really like the Necrons and have sent a number of guys to planets. They've sent expeditionary teams to planets and gotten the teams killed. Granted, at least they haven't messed with the tech as much as groups like the orcs. I remember one bit of lore. A orc war boss actually cut a deal with some Necrons. I don't remember what dynasty, which is their little sub-factions. I don't remember which dynasty they were wheeling and dealing with, but effectively what happened is the deal was help us fight off whatever it was and we will give you some of our tech. And of course the orcs are like, hey, you know, we can get some cool guns that shoot green lightning and vaporize people. Who doesn't want these? So they took the deal, got a handful of Necron Gauss weaponry, and they started to disassemble them to try to understand them and figure out how they can configure them into their own weapon systems. And the thing is, you don't do that with Necron stuff. Disassembly is bad if you don't know what you're doing, because they proceeded to disassemble one of the weapons, and whatever powers it pretty much went critical and vaporized everything within like half a, half a solar system, I think it was. So, they're very risky to toy with. Captain, I have gained new insight into your father's case. These word bearers were acting on orders from the sorcerer I encountered on the Mata. They were trying to find Uther's Rosette and lured your father into a trap to reach their goal. Your father acted irresponsibly, but he was not a willing servant of chaos. We'll see. First, I need that logbook. going inside. Don't mind me, corpse, just grabbing everything else. I have found the logbook, but I can't open it. All right. So, that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. If you are new, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.